Hello everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Empire 2 mod. So, we are starting a new campaign and I have allowed you to vote not only on what mod we're playing, which in this case is Empire 2, but I have also allowed you to choose Nation and you have chosen the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, so that is exactly what we're going to go ahead and play as. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the campaign, shall we? And so here we are on the campaign map. Let's start with the most important thing first. What are the victory goal of this campaign? That will be the same one that I actually did four years ago when I did this campaign. And it's going to be a reverse partition. So Poland obviously was destroyed as sovereign nation when it was uh, partitioned by three nations. Three neighboring nations. And so the idea here is to subjugate, humiliate or destroy these three main nations. And that will be the main goal. So these nations are... The Prussians, the Austrians, and the Russians. As secondary goals, we have the traditional enemy of the Polish-Lithuanians, the Ottomans, and the Swedes. As this campaign starts with the historical setting uh, in 1700, we are starting at the brink of of the outbreak of the Great Northern War. Currently, we are in an alliance with the Russians and with the Danes to see about breaking down the Swedish Empire. Now, the Great Northern War doesn't always trigger, but if it does, then we will join. Even though it didn't go too well for Poland in or Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in the Great Northern War, we're still gonna join in. And in terms of the secondary goals, especially I think especially for Sweden, I wanna kick them out. They're like they can stay in their odd cock shaped area up here in the north, up in the snow. They can stay there. What I wanna do is I wanna push them out out of uh, Livonia and possibly then as part of a goal to bring down the Russians then the Ingria region right here would also be interesting. But otherwise, we'll leave the Swedes to hold this. Maybe uh, if I'm able to take over Stockholm and turn them into a vassal. Uh, but we're going to stay away from the, from the ice-cold cock of the north. Um, in terms of um, the Ottomans, I'm not sure, but possibly like break, breaking up the, pushing them out of Europe and into Asia, and then kind of breaking up and releasing a lot of the different Slavs down here. Uh, I'm sure that won't turn into a mess at all. Uh, right, so that is for the goals. Now, let's go in and take a look at what we need to do in this campaign. So, first and foremost, Poland starts off in a Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, starts off in a pretty bad situation. Because about 60% of the country is in total uproar. Um, no one likes it at all. And also, we start off as a constitutional monarch. One of the main problems of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was that the sort of the lords of the land had more power than the central sort of authority and all these smaller lords could not decide on anything it's actually still it's it's a word it's like I, I can't remember what those words are called um, but P Polish Parliament is a, like a Swedish saying if something's messed up or you can't come to agreement on anything you can say oh that's pfft, a Polish parliament. So it's a, it's a saying that like it's so rooted because it was such a problem. So hopefully I'll be able to turn this actually into an absolute monarchy. But we don't want as it is right now. It's mostly 
the lower populace and I don't want to turn into a republic. Um, I don't think that is uh, in the stars for us. So that's part of the process of turning the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth around, is turning this as an absolute monarchy. First and foremost though, I think we'll not start with that right away because we have to do a few turns to kind of see who declares war on us. Is the Great Northern War going to trigger? If that triggers and that becomes like our main enemies, then I don't see Sweden coming in and attacking us in a major way and I could actually go ahead and do this reformation that I want to. Um, and what else is there? There is, there isn't much. Oh yeah, well, we might as well go through and take a look at the membership unit. So if you become a channel member, you pay, uh, I think it's five dollars a month, you become a channel member, and part of it is that you get the get to see the videos as soon as I upload them. Um, so before everyone else, and then also you get your name displayed at the end of the video and I name a unit in the campaign after you. And so let's go ahead and take a look at them. So since... the I, I, It's kind of interesting because I have 10 members right now. I think it is 10 members, right? No, it's actually 12. And I have exactly 12 um, units on the map. Uh, so it was perfect setup. But what I'll do is currently all these 12 units are named after members. But as we progress and I'm able to recruit better units as we go along, I will upgrade the membership units to wards as we get closer to elite units. And the interesting thing about this mod is the units will upgrade by time as well. So when we get to the sort of the very end, let's go ahead and take a look at the army building here. As we get towards the very end here, We'll actually get like Napoleonic style units. So um, you can see the ones with uh, 1800 at the end there. They are sort of Napoleonic era units, and you can see the little icon. It looks very much like uh, sort of uh, Napoleonic units as well. Haven't been uh, playing with them yet, but uh, once we get there, we'll upgrade so they'll follow along uh, the membership units. But let's quickly go through them. So for this first army here, right in Poland, we've got the Demi Cannons right here, which is the 14th Battery Coles Cop, followed by the 2nd Regiment of Militia Hios, followed by the 6th Pikemen Tunai. And up in the north, in the Lithuanian area, we've got in the fort of Panmune, We've got the 7th Regiment of Pikemen, Wyatt, or the 7th Regiment of Foot. Um, the 5th, Jipilu, and over here we've got the, another army. We've got the Sons of Koshe. Koshi, not entirely sure on the pronunciation. 3rd Regiment, Ogonam. 8th Regiment of Holt. And as we go down to the southern part in the um, Galician region down here, we've got the um, 9th Regiment Tanner, the 4th Regiment Kurt, the uh, 1st Cavalry Izzy, the 1st Regiment Nick, and the 10th Regiment Majowski. In terms, I know Nick specifically has asked for a skirmish unit, so once this militia unit upgrades, or when I'm able to recruit a skirmish unit, he, this the first regiment will be turned into a skirmish unit. With that said, let's go ahead and start and reform the country. So one of the things that's important here is we need to deal, of course, with the, all these areas being very unhappy. In terms of changing um, sort of the uh, constitution, as it were, or changing into an absolute monarch, I only really need to focus on the main part of the country. So let's try and set up so the smaller areas out to the sides here do not go ahead and revolt. 
in terms of this area, I'm just going to go ahead and send the army out there to go ahead and deal with that. And because I really want to set up the port of Gdansk here, I really want to set it up. I'm actually going to build a peasant farm in the center there so we get as much food into this area as possible. Because right now it's going to take 95 turns to get the next village to rise here. So I want to speed that process up. In terms of uh, Vilnius, well, we've got... they're not too happy here. Cultural unrest is pretty high, it's 12 points. So I'm thinking we'll go for a Magistrate, because Magistrate reduces cultural unrest. It also gives happiness and repression. So I think that's a pretty good building to start with, so we're going to go ahead and build that right there. And we're going to build one of those buildings right here as well, where we got even higher. We got 14 cultural unrest. And to aid with that, we're going to send this army plus the troops out of the wooden fort right here. I'm going to send them into this region to deal with that. Then we go south. Here, we actually already have a peasant farm in this region. And it's only four turns until the next village comes online. If I exempt this region from tax, it's only two, which is great, because that village can then be turned into um, a magistrate building. We're also going to be sending uh, the troops, all the troops here, is going to be sent into the capital region. And also, because we're kind of a spread out empire here, I want to be able to traverse this one rather quickly so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna spend the money to build good roads and I'm thinking in terms of movement here I'm thinking that the Lithuanian area and the Warsaw area are the biggest one to quickly kind of traverse through here since we're on the brink on the Great Northern War I think it's gonna be important to take a look at what the Swedes got in store for us so we're going to move and check them out. And other than that, I think we're going to save the money to start off with. And we're going to be seeing a little bit of what's going to happen. Because I'm a little bit interested to see here if this is going to trigger. Or if it's going to be some of the other nations that declare war on us. Currently, the nations that are very unhappy with us are the Ottomans are quite unhappy with us. Um, as we go through and take a look at who's very unhappy with us. It's Ottomans, the Swedes, the Crimeans, Knights of St. John, and Prussia. And then we get too indifferent once we hit the Austrians. Currently we are actually trading with the Prussians, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, we're going to try and set up some trade agreements here. We don't have a lot of options because we don't have a port. But uh, since we've got the Ukrainians right on our doorstep, we're going to set up trade with them. 420? Fine. I just want to check. 420 seems like a lot. What do I make from trade with them? Okay, so I make that back in a turn. So that wasn't too bad, actually. Um... The Crimeans, I have no interest in being raided by the Tartars. But maybe tr setting up trade with them will invite them to actually come to me. But a hundred? That seems reasonable. How long will that take to pay off? Crimeans, th I, that will triple. I will have triple payout in the first turn. That's great. Um, let's try and keep the Austrians away from us. We can start setting up trade with them no nope, they even if they don't even want payment they're not interested and we're not going to try we're not even going to try with the ottomans and the swedes and so that is everything for trade the final bit here is we want to go into the ministers a lot of them is trash only really the justice minister is good the one that i think we want to change is the treasury one is morally impaired. That's his only quality for getting this job. So he needs to go. Unfortunately, since I am a constitutional monarch, I can't just 
or I, since I'm not a absolute monarch, I cannot just like kick people out and switch out whatever. Now we were lucky because we got someone that's actually good. Management happiness for the lower classes. So we actually got a good guy in there. That's pretty darn great. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and end turn and we're going to see who declares war on who. Right at the start here, and we're going to see if we start the Great Northern War or if someone else decides to go to war with us. So, with that said, let's go ahead and end turn. Oh, so um, we get this um, re really weird diplomatic suggestions, which is common for Empire. So, Great Britain wants to trade Jamaica for Western Prussia and Lithuania. That's nowhere near an equal trade. So they want all of this plus this. I, that's 40% of my country for an island, for a sugar plantation island. Psh. You know what, Great Britain? What, has you, what have you ever done for us? Go sod off. And now it's the Prussians. They offer military access indefinite and military alliance. However, they demand Western Prussia. This one was, I was a little bit worried. It's Germans asking for a corridor to um, Eastern Prussia. I think I think I've heard this one before or well I guess in the future but uh, I'm gonna have to decline Prussia this uh, does not seem like a fair deal so I'm not gonna be as rude as I was the British I'm gonna be more tactful and hope that you don't declare war on me here come the Russians the Russians are crazy. There's no um, idea trying to um, figure them out. So they want Belarus. They're, I don't know. They're looking for Prigozhin, maybe. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, they offer military access indefinite. And they want to give me two shit regions in the middle of bloody nowhere. No? You know what, Russia? You can keep Siberia. We're already allied, and we're, we're we were supposed to fight the Swedes. Why are you here trying to trade away pe useless piece of land in Siberia? Uh, but um, of course, Peter the Great. Um, yeah, probably should have been a little more tactful against him, but right, I'm not gonna go ahead and yeah, he's disappointed, but hopefully he can figure something else out. An ally has been attacked. Sweden attacks Denmark. The Great Northern War is starting off. And we will honor the alliance. Because I've already pissed off Russia a little bit. I don't want to... Uh, I, I want to keep whatever I can from fighting them right now. So we will enter. Declare war on Swedish Empire. First turn is done. We're at war with Sweden. We have been able to build the farms here in Western Prussia. Spain and Bavaria has broken. Okay, couldn't care less. Letter of demand from Western Prussia. Workers on strike in Western Prussia. War declared. Uh, Marathon Confederacy and Portugal. Russia and Sweden. And United Province and Spain. Right, we'll have this force go in and take set up over there. And this region is actually fine. And it will be fine. So I will take the army under Stanislav Ponyatovsky. Stanislav Poniatowski is going to be moving towards the Swedes. Uh, it's going to take a while to get there. Meanwhile, the we have the 7th and the 5th regiments. It's going to join in with uh, Pavel Lemke. 
and his force as this setup right here. I think they were probably able to actually move out from this area. But let's just hold on a little bit and see if we cannot um, build the magistrate before we leave. We've got some excess money and I think we're going to put that into uh, building some more buildings here. What I'm thinking for the capital is we're going to build a crafts workshop in this slot. It will give cash and it will also reduce the cost of recruiting new troops. Um, what should we build here? Actually, we do not have a military camp. And I would say we definitely need that. Cannon Foundry gives repression and happiness for nobility and it only costs me... 750 so we're gonna go ahead and buy that let's go ahead and have our spy we don't need to infiltrate but we know what's here so it's kind of small force pretty good general though instead we're gonna head over to the Ingria region take a look at what the Swedes have their impossible reinforcements for now we are friendly enough with the Prussians uh, we lost one point so we're down from 45 to 44 could I possibly present them with a gift Oof, that's expensive uh, technology they have the plug bayonet hopefully though I will soon have my academic training doctrine on line which will reduce cost all around let's make sure that I haven't missed any um, agents now it's just my nobleman which is in the University of Krakow uh, Stanislav he's a doctorate that's pretty good actually could I want mm. maybe I should go for something like this because usually these increase yeah increase the time for technology but I feel like right now we need military to be able to uh, defend the country. Um, hopefully we'll gain some more reputable, reputable doctorates that can go ahead and join here. Right, so I think we're going to end quite a few turns so I can actually get my army to fight the first battle of this series. So we'll be moving through rather quickly here. And hopefully no one else decides to declare war on us. We are back, it's a new year, 1701, and we start off with a public servant has died. Uh, Stanislav Jablinski. Uh, no, that's Jack Black, isn't it? We've gone ahead and built up quite a few different buildings as I'm reworking our empire, Captain Kidd, that we could care less about the pirates in the Caribbean. Um, so we're building up, we're, as of yet, none of the roads are done, but soon enough they will be. And we're building up, and also I realized, why was I trying to go away all the way this or this way around to get to Riga? I should have just gone through here. This is my bloody vassal. Of course I should go straight through them, right? So we are within striking distance. In terms of what has happened otherwise, in the bigger scheme of things, luckily for me, the Prussians are not happy with me, but they're even more unhappy with everyone else, it seems. So I did notice that they declared war on the um, Austrians, but as it turns out, the Prussians are currently at war with the United Province, Great Britain, the Islamic Emirate, everyone, so no one likes the Islamic Emirate, um, Austria, Württemberg, Bavaria, Venice, Sweden, and the pirates. Everyone. They're basically at war with everyone. I can't even think of anyone else they might be at war with. Like, it's that, it's that crazy. So, let's just say the Prussians don't have time to fight us, and the Austrians, they're gonna be, bu they're gonna be busy back and forth here. Um, so, we are safe as of now. And with that, 
We've also had our spy go ahead and check out the region up here. As of yet, the Swedes have not put any more troops along their Baltic holdings right on this side. So it seems like an ample opportunity now to strike at Riga, where we have Carl Gustav Reinschild, which is in command of three regiments. Uh, it looks like another three will come uh, through the town, but we, I have plenty of troops. I have plenty of cavalry, pike, and militia, so I think we will be just fine. With that, let's go ahead and strike the Swedes for the first battle of this campaign. What I can see here is that the Swedes do have a regular line infantry. You know what? I think I might need some extra troops here. Um, because with this right now, the only real advantage I have is that I have the Provincial Cavalry, the 1st Regiment, Izzy. That is my main advantage. I might be able to draw on troops from this. We can have the 2nd Cavalry maybe actually move in. Currently, how many troops can I possibly move from this without this causing unrest? Everyone, actually. So, with that, let's go ahead and have the entire force move at great speed to reinforce this. Right. With that, let's go ahead and turn once more. And then we'll strike the bloody Swedes. Should have figured as much. Reinkild has gotten... Uh, intelligence that more Polish troops were on the way so he decides to strike the strike out and attack the force that's laying siege to uh, Riga. With that said let's have Stanislav and Karl Gustav meet on the battlefield. The Swedish army has been spotted. The aggressive Swedes have moved to sally forth against the Polish before they may are able to lay a proper siege. This has taken the Polish army by surprise uh, as their full force is not ready and up to join the battle. They will be fighting outnumbered. The army should be directed to uh, leave the road and take up position on the high ground and prepare to face the oncoming Swedish attack. We've taken control of the high ground but the Swedes are coming on strong and they do outnumber us. And they've got plenty more guns than us. So even with our superior ground, this will be a tough fight. Now my plan for this is to specifically target their flank. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and hold for as long as possible the 1st Regiment, Nick, and the 4th, Kurt. And then 9th and 10th Regiment, the two Pike Regiments, Tanner and Mayovsky will be moving in together with the 1st Cavalry Regiment Izzy and strike hard to try and break this self squad right here the armed populace hopefully we'll be able to break them and cause a break through the lines of the Swedes currently they're marching on in very thick formations so I'm hoping that will incur extra losses on them. 
Currently my general is moving slightly to the side, so he's not right behind there. The problem right now is it cohesion was lost quite a bit on my uh, pike regiment as we moved up here. I don't know how long we'll be able to hold in this fashion. I think we'll, even if our cohesion is really poor here, I think we need to go right away. And I think I'll support that side with the general as well. Even though in Empire, the general being close to the units doesn't really mean much. Pike regiments have currently been able to march forward unhindered, but we have already lost almost a hundred men uh, while not being able to really inflict anything close to that on the Swedes. Let's go ahead and make the uh, widen the regiment a little bit. The general is about to take part in this. I think we'll start off the cavalry. It looks like they're turning to face the cavalry now. We shot a few of our own there. Not great. God awful pike regiments moving. Completely into a different area. They are wavering. I'm going to do a hammer and anvil with the cavalry. Oh, they are breaking. Cavalry will move away. Why is the cavalry? Cohesion is now terrible for the cavalry. The pikes will continue to actually get back into it, cavalry. Let's see if we can't break them here. The general's coming in. Joining in. Cavalry continue. Chase them down. The general follows, fires as he goes. Oh, you're a little bit unhappy there. I order Pike Square. Oh, unfortunately, my cavalry was broken in the middle of all of that. That's very unfortunate. Then the cavalry regiment was more or less slaughtered in that fight. I think we're shooting on our own over here. Unfortunately, it looks like my... Uh, my plan of attack has failed. The cavalry completely gone. Trying to chase after the Swedes. The Swedes have reorganized their troops. 10th Regiment is now unfortunately leaving. So is a big part of our force. Looks like uh, this first battle here, the Swedes were able to uh, outsmart us. 9th Regiment holding strong. Oh, I think that these guys are about to set up to shoot at the general. He's going to have to leave. The 9th is going to have to be... Uh, going to have to hold their position for as long as possible as a rear guard. But clearly here, we uh, were bested by the Swedish force. We must leave and regroup with extra troops. Unfortunate situation here the 9th Regiment, for not to speak about the cavalry, which were uh, more or less slaughtered in this fight. I 
I don't know, it looks like the 9th might be annihilated. They're broken. They're leaving now. I'll order complete retreat of the army. This battle turned into a disaster for us. The only thing we've done is give the Swedish force quite a bit of experience. While leaving ourselves quite vulnerable. Our own overconfidence was our downfall. Uh, the Swedes moved hastily to defeat the first Polish force here. The uh, first regiment of cavalry was entirely annihilated and so it looks like the 9th Pike Regiment also entirely annihilated. Um, so only part of our army were able to leave the field. Half the army lay dead on the uh, side of the field. The Swedes lost about 400 men compared to our almost 700. Uh, this was a black day for the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Before the 9th Regiment died, it was actually able to gain three experience. And they were the second they killed the most, besides the cavalry. Unfortunately, both the units that killed the most was entirely annihilated. And then we can see as it goes along, one of the militia units actually gained post um, one bit of experience after this. But yeah, it's going to take a while probably to for me to get to know how the mod plays. As uh, so we start off campaign with a defeat. With that defeat in mind, I'm I'm going to need to switch priority. We're definitely gonna need a lot more troops and a lot better troops. Currently we're making almost 5,000 per turn and I've got 8,000 saved up. So for the next video We'll hopefully be turning this around. We also now have uh, Limpic coming up. Lem Piki. Lempiki? We've got General Lempike coming up. 
with his troops. And together with the remnants there, we should be able to attack. Very unfortunate here that in the first episode, I lost to, to like, was entirely annihilated. And so also with this is that um, with how the mod is set up, I cannot replenish. So I need to recruit extra troops to uh, refit these forces. Uh, but I'm thinking we're just going to keep merging these ones, these early ones, until they disappear. And then reform the regiments as new, better regiments. So, not a great start in terms of our battle here against the Swedes. Um, but I think in the rematch, in next episode, which I... Uh, Hope you turn up to watch. So, with that said, I will say, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.